Good afternoon, I'm Connie Boyer, Mayor of Fairfield, and today I have with me Terry Kness, one of our newest council members, yes. and you represent Ward, Ward one. 1. Yes, thank and you. And you took Martha Rasmussen's mm -hmm. place. So. Yep. Happy to be here. Yep, and we're happy to have you on the council, and this is a smart gal, so if you watch council member uh, council meeting, <laughs> you'll even know that just from the other night. Well, thank you. And we appreciate um, really your background and where you're coming from. So mm -hmm. thinking of that, why don't you just give us a thumbnail sketch of, you know, where, what, what's your background in business sure. and, and a couple things that you've done that's really contributing. Sure. So um, my career started in banking. I was in banking through college um, and then my professional career ran a couple bank branches before my husband and Aaron and I moved back to Fairfield. Um, when I started my career in manufacturing at Barker Company, which then became Hill Phoenix, um, decided to run for Jefferson County Treasurer um, and did that for eight years following Barker Company because I wanted to be closer to Fairfield and, and have more children. So the writer came along after Rowan. Um, and then after eight years of public service, um, I had kind of set out to do everything I wanted to do in the treasurer's office. So I went to work for the Iowa Treasurer's website, which was a privately owned company. Um, worked there for a couple of years, got to stay home with my kids during the pandemic, which was great. Um, worked for a tax software company, and then most recently just joined uh, Wheaton Companies um, as the director of customer experience. This is my first week, so I'm finishing up day five today. Um, I, on Tuesday, I showed up to work and I was like, Nate, I'm exhausted. I haven't done this for six years. And he <laughs> laughed at me. He's like, you've been here for two days. <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just getting back into the swing of right? things of yeah. going into an office five days a week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, working with customers, working in, in public service, you just get a different take on, you know, on what it's like to run government and, mm -hmm. and run a city, run a county, run anything. Um, you know, I'm really fiscally responsible. Like you're gonna see me and you saw it during the Ways and Means Committee meetings, like always sharpening the pencil. We have mm -hmm. to figure out how to cut costs um, just because, you know, the, the legislature themselves are, are ensuring that we're doing that this year yes. with the levy rate cap. Um, but yeah, I'm just really mindful of how we spend money, how we spend time. Um, I think every department probably has some efficiencies they can realize. And I just, you know, want to bring those types of things to, to our department head's attention and, and the public's attention that, you know, if you have ideas, share them and, and see what we can do to implement them. Yeah. So. And, and one of the things that we has come up in the last few months is uh, trying to be um, more transparent, mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, the public more engaged, and that's part of the reason we're doing this now every month yep. towards the end of the month so we can uh, talk to the public about what's been happening. So today's um, <coughs> program really will be talking about the first quarter sure, and some of the projects, some of the annoying projects, <laughs> <laughs> and um, things to also look forward to and, and what's coming up. Sure. So, um, and just really quickly to go over, looking back the last three months, um, <clears throat> one of the things that we always do at the very beginning of January is appoint um, and recognize our official newspaper, which is mm -hmm. the Southeast Iowa Union. So that's where our notices are. <clears throat> now, there are press releases that go to the radio station, mm -hmm. and um, the Fairfield Journal now is getting them. Um, and we have a Facebook page, yeah. and many departments have a Facebook page, as well as the police department, park and rec. You can also go to the city's website and sign up for alerts. Yes, I did that uh, <coughs> right when I got on city council, and it automatically adds. I, I subscribed to the calendar, and it adds every single meeting to my own personal calendar, so I don't have to schedule my city council meetings. They're already on there for me. That's it's, awesome. It's phenomenal, yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that. <laughs> I can show you how. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think maybe I signed up for Park and Rec, but yeah. I did. apparently I didn't sign up for that one. Sure. Anyway, I think that's a really cool thing. It is. Um, and one of the things that's new uh, on the police department's website yes. is their daily uh, press briefing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you're curious about ha what's happening in town, you can go to their Facebook page and, and yeah. see that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of interesting. Um, so January many times is kind of routine things. Appointing uh, certain people to certain things, uh, doing mm -hmm. our depository, no uh, committees. bank, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of things. Yep. So that's kind of January. And then we start in that budget process. Yep. So why don't you talk about the budgeting process, and then we can talk about 
we saw increase in fees. We, sure. we can talk about those. I got a list, yep. but I'll let you kind of lead the way. Sure. And um, but tell us what your experience was that that first. Yeah. So um, you know, having a new city administrator with Doug, um, he and team Melanie, Don, every, everyone, you know, department heads, everyone that's that, that has touched the budget, did a phenomenal job of how they presented it to council. Um, they broke everything out line by line. You know, it really got us to be able to look at, okay, something doesn't look right here. Um, and, you know, we really spent a ton of time going through, you know, line items to figure out why is this so much more than it was last year? You know, if we're never spending money out of this line item, why do we have such a big line item? You know, things like that, that if you're only seeing a bottom dollar, you, you don't get to, to see those things. So it was really nice that they broke it out um, really by in detail. Um, and then, you know, just work through with some department heads on different yeah. things. Um, as we stated earlier, we have a cap on our, on our levy. Um, so we're truly limited to how many property tax dollars we can levy within the city. And so that just makes, you know, once you get to that number, there, there's no more money to levy. And so, you know, you do have to start making department cuts and, and hopefully never um, people cuts, personnel. You don't want to see people lose their jobs. So that's why I think it's really important that we start looking ahead and making sure that we can continue to pay for the things we need to pay for um, and, and, you know, keep the people on that we need to do those jobs um, because without them, it, you know, nothing gets done. Yeah. So uh, I bet, I don't know how many hours we spent. It was a lot. <laughs> right? <laughs> a lot of days. I think we had three separate days that we probably spent three to four, five, six hours um, a day working on the budget. Um, and then Doug had a great idea to present it to the, um, to the public. Uh, not a huge turnout for that, but I expect that to change throughout the years as people become aware yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, it was really an opportunity for people to dig in there and ask questions. Right. Uh, I think Doug sent out like 150 invitations. Mm -hmm. I think most of them were email, but sure. personally inviting people to come, to be able to talk to department heads, talk to council members, mm -hmm. um, ask questions about why a particular you know, line item or yep. whatever. You know, most people, <clears throat> I mean, we really rarely have somebody come to council member, council meetings and ask about the budget during the budgeting right. process. Right, sure. So um, again, this is a, this was an opportunity and, and are, are trying to get it out to the public mm -hmm. and be more transparent. Yep. And also working with our hospitals, our schools, yes. and our county supervisors, so mm -hmm. they can see what we're doing, mm -hmm. and also be able to um, share information. And if there's things that make sense for us to do together, you know, or do something a little differently, mm -hmm. it hopefully those things will start to come up. Agreed. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So um, first time, uh, we'll plan to continue to do it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll have more people next round. So um, look for it next year. So let's talk a little bit of increase in fees. Mm -hmm. oh, we had to increase fees. Yep. Um, and that's really just to stay even. Sure. Right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, they're not large increases. Um, I, I can never remember the exact dollar amount off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. it's minimal 50 cents here, a dollar yeah. 25 here. Yeah. Um, so not anything that's going to break anybody's budget. Um, but you know, collectively will we'll make a big difference to the city's budget and our ability to keep maintaining our sewer and water quality. Yeah. Sewer mm -hmm. and water, particularly sewer, particularly, <coughs> um, was increased uh, just to keep up. Yes. You know, we're, we're still doing major projects. Um, uh, right now it's kind of on the southeast, south, southwest part of town. Is it by the right? trail there? Yes. By high, or by uh, yeah. 163? Or yeah, yeah, out there by the hospital. I thought so. Yep. yep. So um, new pipe is being laid, and um, you know we we for at least twenty years have been reporting to EPA. Mm -hmm. And our last council meeting, um, Melanie brought her report that has to go into EPA. She said we'll probably still be doing it for twenty years from mm -hmm. now. So um, and that that kind of started with um, sewer overflows many right. many years ago. Yep. And so that started a process 
uh, why is this happening, um, and upgrades. And that upgrading is still going on. Yep. Mm -hmm. So and we're talking millions of dollars. So again, just to be just for us to be able to pay our loan payments for these sewer upgrades, we mm -hmm. had to increase your your um, sewer bills. Yep. But that said, uh, um, there is something on <clears throat> one of our papers that um, I want to mention just because it's a segue. And I oh, think it's maybe on lawn yours. meters. Is that what you're talking uh, about? Yeah, lawn meters. Okay. Can you talk? Uh, let's just explain what lawn sure. meters are. So mm -hmm. I actually looked into this myself because I had to water my yard um, last summer. Uh, it just wasn't feasible for us to do. But um, you can request a, a separate lawn meter if you're going to be filling a pool doing a lot of watering so that you don't have to pay the sewer charges because it's not going into the sewer. Um, so it costs around $300. It's just whatever the price is at, you know, at that time of what it costs the city. Um, and you have to get uh, your own plumber to reconfigure the plumbing and, and get the actual meter installed. So, yeah. But it is, it is a good thing if you yeah, it'd be do a, huge a tremendous savings. amount of water. Yep. And by the way, if you got a pool and you're filling it, mm -hmm. you will get a water bill, a big one. Mm -hmm. So just be prepared. Yep. That's part of the deal. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other increases in fees include waste management, <clears throat> um, labor and equipment, you know, um, and franchise fees. Before we go to franchise fees, because I want you to explain a little bit about that, but I want to talk about labor and equipment. We do not want to mow your lawns, people. And that's at like, ah, uh, that's on there too. That's on here I'm too. Getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're good. But, that's great. Um, we really don't. We really don't want the street crew to be out mowing people's lawns and whacking their weeds, and and you know that's a minimum charge of one hundred and ninety dollars yeah. if if you haven't done it yourself. So um, if there's some, particularly if there's some issue, get in contact with the city mm -hmm. and uh, so we can work something out. Right. Because again, we we really don't. Well, they've got other things to do. Yep. I right? have a fifteen year old son that can come push your your lawn. So. <laughs> <laughs> it makes some money, right? He's looking for jobs. <clears throat> there you go. So let's talk about franchise fee a little sure. bit. Sure. Um, that was increased as well. Mm -hmm. uh, last year we did a 1%. Yep. And then talk about that during the budgeting process. Sure. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, many cities are utilizing the franchise fee and took it. The, the maximum franchise fee right now is 5%. Um, and that goes on your Alliant Energy Bill. Um, I think it's prudent to not... Uh, this is my personal opinion, I um, think it's prudent to not rely on that for our expenses beca because once you max a fee out, that's again, that's all the revenue you have. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we're essentially taxing in a, in a different way. So, um, you know, my, my goal throughout this entire budget season was to keep that franchise fee increase to the absolute minimum that we could. Yeah. Um, we did raise it from 1% to 3%. Yeah. We went up 2%. Yes. Um, so you will see just a little bit of an increase on that. Um, my intention is for that to only be for this budget year and then really start diving into the budgets for next budget year um, and, you know, try to roll back. Because essentially, um, if we don't spend our um, contingencies that we have set aside, our budget will be back to balance and we think we can we think we can proceed with a positive uh, <coughs> revenue and not be in the negative next budget year without a franchise fee yeah. of what we're doing this yeah. year. So and I'm optimistic for that. Yeah. And I have to say, I really appreciated that because um, I also was not in favor of mm -hmm. really increasing it from the 1%. Mm -hmm. Last year we did, what happened was uh, a sales tax went away and the franchise fee replaced it. Mm -hmm. So it was a one for one. But I personally, again, didn't want it to see go more than 1%. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciated that uh, <coughs> we were able to keep it yep. as low as we could. Sure. Because there there was some movement in the very beginning to mm -hmm. move it just from 1 to 5. Yes, yes. Even before we started budgeting. So I was uh, glad we were able to pull that back. Yep. And um, again, I'm hoping we can do that again next year. Me too. really like to be able to see that. So let's talk about some of the other things that are going on. Um, <coughs> One of the things that I wanted to mention, which maybe some people know uh, about this, but Evergreen Cemetery has a portion of that cemetery that actually belongs to the city of Fairfield. Mm -hmm. And so part of our budget is we do give some money to um, Evergreen Cemetery to mow that. And I can't remember, do you remember the acres? I don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't either. But 
I don't know if it's 20% of the whole cemetery. Mm -hmm. You know, you, c you don't really know where the Fairfield line is versus Evergreen because they're, you know, they're right together. But mostly it's the older part of the cemetery right okay. along B Street. And, um, <clears throat> And ever, er, cemeteries are not money-making deals, mm -hmm. right? So they've been finding it hard to budget mm -hmm. um, and um, actually even hard to um, find employees, yeah. part-time employees in the summer. So again, if you're interested in mowing and weed eating, like to be outdoors, yeah. you know, go visit Matt at the Evergreen Cemetery. Um, I don't know if he's hired people yet for summertime, but... Um, at any rate, one of the things that they did, and there were many letters that went out mm -hmm. to community members, is they are in the process of building an endowment mm -hmm. fund to help the operations of the Evergreen. And for me, I thought, wow, that's, you know, first of all, that's a really great idea. Mm -hmm. I've got now both my parents at Evergreen, my grandparents, a lot of extended family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought about how many times, right, that I go out there in the summer to pay my respects, particularly to my parents and grandparents. But I hadn't donated anything, mm -hmm. not really thinking about it, sure. you know? And I thought, well, that's my obligation. Mm -hmm. You know, they're there. And so as a citizen, we donated to the um, endowment fund Great. so that, uh, you know, our parents' and grandparents' plots are kind of taken care of. Sure. And it wasn't a huge donation, so I guess I'm just challenging everybody mm -hmm. to think about that uh, as a family legacy and taking care of your ancestors that have gone sure. before. And uh, you know, we want we want to keep the cemetery nice. So Agreed. Mm -hmm. If you can give a little bit to that foundation yep. to help loosen up that budget a little bit, so it makes it a little bit easier, and they're not always in the hole and begging for right <laughs> donations yes. you know year to year we want to we want to be able to keep it a little bit easier for them yeah because certainly yeah. you know the city we we'd prefer not to have to take on that cost either, oh so. absolutely yeah because that's what could happen mm -hmm. definitely exactly. if, if evergreen as a private entity finally said we can't keep it running yep. it's going to come back to the city and then guess what then it is a hard cost yeah yeah mm -hmm. yep and um yeah that would be not good for the city so, uh, another area of kind of um, challenge has been the um, brush pile. Oh, yes. The brush pile. The brush pile. <laughs> <laughs> well, topic and we love to talk about. Yes, and it's been tricky, too, because we had all of the trees that took the weight of the snow and haven't done a brush pickup yet. So people have been antsy when it was nice out to get that brush out on the street. Some people are even putting it in the street, <laughs> I've been told. Um, and then they're joking like, hey, city council member, can you fix this? <laughs> It'll be picked up in about a week. Yeah. Um, so yes, they're, they're coming out and doing brush pickup starting in May, yep. correct? Um, but yes, please don't abuse the compost site and, and the brush pile site. Um, it's only for residents, it's not for contractors. So currently we've had to lock it during the week yeah. and that mm -hmm. has helped yeah. I think quite a bit keep those Yeah, large. at one point this winter we, we just, we're at capacity. We couldn't mm -hmm. take any more. And That's we had why to, we had to close it. Yeah, we had to hire someone to come in and do the grinding, didn't we? Yes. And so it, that was a cost to the city that we had to absorb as well. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity to get free mulch. You can get free mulch. Um, however, yeah, it does cost. Mm -hmm. I think it's like ten or 11000 every time the big grinder comes in. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we're trying to keep that to a minimum, and we're trying to find other solutions. So, um, but we do need to keep... Uh, contractors out of there. Mm -hmm. It's not for contractors who are getting paid to do tree work, etc. They should be finding their own mm -hmm. place to... There's lots of people that like firewood. ...do mm -hmm. whatever they need to do with their trees. Yep. So, anyway. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, some expanded housing. Yes. And Martin Brett's project. Yeah. And Reef Green. Um, Martin Brett has acquired, I don't know the exact amount of acres, but or how many houses it'll be. I think it's <clears throat> 15 or 18 to start, maybe. Um, I think there's a couple phases. Yeah. Uh, right by where or where Reef Green and Feed is off of Highway 1. Um, so he has asked for that to be annexed into the city. Um, what am I forgetting? We're in that process. Yep. So um, he got a grant for a brownfield. Yep. So you'll see a lot of those buildings, you know, see those buildings coming down. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that's going to be a great, again, more housing in that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martin just is keeping busy doing that. Yep. And it's it's a great opportunity for Fairfield. Yep. Um, I'm glad he was able to come in agreement with Dave, Mr. Reef, mm -hmm. and uh, allows, I think it probably allows Dave to retire, yep. which is probably a good thing. And um, so you'll see stuff going out north of town, which is really cool. It is. And now that we're getting the spring, I want to say dogs on the leash. Yep. Got to get your dogs on the <laughs> leash, right? That's one of our biggest, really, one of my biggest yeah. complaints that I hear is dogs off leashes mm -hmm. or dogs on a leash that are not controlled mm -hmm. by their owners. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you I, have a big I've dog, encountered it with right? when I was with my dog on a leash and um, and the dog came charging it at my dog and I and I had to like kick kick it to keep it from biting us. Yeah. And it was scary. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. If you've got. Again, I don't like to pick on breeds, but I personally don't like pit bulls. Mm -hmm. Pit bulls have tremendous strength. Um, you know, I like boxers, but they have tremendous mm -hmm. strength. So if you've got that kind of dog, the big one, a Great Dane, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what breed it is. No, it doesn't. If they yeah. are big and they're bigger than you and they have tremendous strength, you've got to train them and know how to handle them. Yep. And we've got a great trainer in town. Oh. So, um, I'm blanking out on his name, but oh, yeah, I don't know call me. I'll get it for you. <laughs> um, so if Perfect. you need help with that, we do have a, at least one trainer in town that I know of. Okay. So, Good. you know, we need to use them. For sure. Thank you to all the people who came out on Street Sweepers Ball. Oh, yeah. They had 100 people. I was out of town for a baseball tournament with mm -hmm. my grandson, so I wasn't there, but I got this glowing report from That's Deb great. Williamson, Good. and it just sounded like... They had a great time. That's so awesome. thank you for mm -hmm. all those volunteers. Thank you to the Arbor Committee. Yeah. They planted 17 trees, I think, oh, great. out um, at Carrington Point, um, where a lot of trees were lost because of the Emerald Ash Borer. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. We got a $5,000 grant for that, um, through, again, through Alliant. Yep. So that's awesome. Good. Um, we talked about EPA. Oh, let's talk about Highway 1. Oh, yes. The good news is... It's going to be opening back up, I think, May 3rd. Is that right? So uh, next week? Let's check that last paper. We got something about it this morning. Um, as of our meeting today, north, south, and east traffic will be open around noon on May 3rd. Yep. 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 That's great. It's great, yeah. So they're going to grind in where the lines get painted and do permanent paint this time because the temporary paint wore off pretty quickly uh, yeah. throughout the winter. But yeah. And there will be a couple closings yet. Yeah. However, it will get open mm -hmm. north and south. The west and side of Fillmore, um, so it'd be going towards the middle school from Highway 1, will be remain closed about another week or two um, to allow for the completion of the storm sewers and the sidewalks there. Um, and then May 6, Libertyville Road will close on the west side of the roundabout, including that part of the Casey's driveway. So it'll just be that Liberty Drive detour again um, yeah. to get to Libertyville Road. Yeah. Um, and then there'll be some mm -hmm. work on Buchanan as well, um, but he's not sure about that schedule. So yeah. we'll keep you posted so on that. So a little finishing up. Mm -hmm. And we know it's been totally annoying, especially <laughs> when we shut down the east part of town. Yes. So apologize for that, but this is just what yeah. had to be. Yeah. And um, you just had to plan for 10 more over. minutes. Ten more, it just takes you 10 more minutes. Right? Yeah. So we're happy to get that done and going. Um, new bathrooms at Chautauqua Park and Waterworks, that's still being worked on. Good. Um, it's been a little bit of a slow project. Um, I didn't have a clue how, how a box of a building and some bathrooms could be so expensive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, and you have to do shatterproof. I don't even know what the material is for the toilets because they yeah. continuously get vandalized. Um, so I'm sure that just yeah. adds to cost, that's right? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, that's happening. Uh, we just demoed a house on 6th Street. Yeah, it looks great. So that is... Anybody that know. wants to put up housing, contact the city. and Absolutely. So I don't think it's in stone yet. Mm -hmm what the next step is for yeah. that lot, but the, but the property committee is working on that, mm -hmm. and um, you know, yeah. I'm sure soon we'll have a lot for sale. Yeah, our, yeah, mm -hmm. our entire goal in doing this is to get, you know, really livable housing back. So new construction, you know, a tiny home, 
you know, I don't, I don't care what kind of structure it is, just mm-hmm. something that will be great for somebody to live in and not, yeah. not something dilapidated like what we just tore down, so. Yeah. Yep. So I wanted to mention, and we're, we're kind of on the back end here, uh, and in your water bill, you sometimes get papers like this. Yes. Uh, I just got this one today, and this was last, last month. month. Mm-hmm. So don't just throw these away. Mm-hmm. Look at them because they have important information. So this is the one that came out here this last month. It talks about the spring brush pickup, which we talked about. That's going to start on May 6th. It talks about the free mulch and the compost. Um, So they are open at 3 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Okay. Um, Burning is allowed in April, October, and November, only those three months, Mm -hmm. on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays only. Okay, so, and you can't burn in the street, you can't burn in the alley. Um, burning of trash, household garbage, scraps, that's yep. not allowed either. This is more like your... Leaves and leaves. Yep. some small twigs type yep. of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Hydrant flushing, that mm-hmm. started on April 15th. I've seen so some So I'm not sure if they're completely done yet. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, but, oh, it does say flushing could take several months mm-hmm. depending on the area and unscheduled occurrences. Like, I don't think our area has been done yet. Yeah. I haven't noticed it. It so. says you may experience rust-colored water, low water pressure, or possible periods of no water at all. Mm-hmm. My dad has always told me to turn on your cold water first, especially in instances like this, because you don't want that type of water going into your water heater. So if, if you know that they've been in your area, make sure you, you turn on your cold water, get that dirty water flushed out of your system, and then turn on your hot water. Okay, great, yeah. great tip. It says also a strong chlorine smell is typical mm-hmm. as we will be using free chlorine, whatever that means. Um, so just be looking for that, that mm-hmm. might happen. Um, right of way, if you're working in that space between the sidewalk and the street, you gotta get permission, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you have a contractor that needs to cut down a tree, you've got to get permission. There are certain trees also that are allowed to be Mm -hmm. replanted in those right-of-ways, so think of that. Yeah, there's an application Um, process, it says, but there's no cost, so. Right. So just, again, know that that's there. Um, Shouldn't be creating gardens, technically, in in there, Mm -hmm. in the the right-of-way. And, you have to make sure that there are no plantings six feet from a fire hydrant. Sure. Um, if there's a fire, that the firemen want to be able to see where that fire hydrant mm-hmm. is right away, and they don't, you, you know, they they don't want to cover it up with large bushes and flowers. Agreed. Yeah. So be, same same be thing with of that. large bushes or anything in the right of way. Yep. And on corners. Yeah. You don't want to obstruct the view. Yep. Mm-hmm. Great. Great points. Parking restrictions. Um, this says that the um, The street sweeper goes from April to October on the last Thursday night of the month. So until from midnight to 6 a.m. Friday. So keep your your cars off the street. That's downtown, correct? I think that's anywhere. Uh, Central business district. Yeah, but I think I think that's for just central business. All vehicles parked in the central business district must be off the street in that district to permit scheduled street cleaning without parked vehicle interference. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe so. Okay. Um, Parking will not be permitted in that district between the hours of midnight. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. And 6 a.m. the last Thursday of April through October. So you could be towed Mm -hmm. at your expense. So pay attention to that. And there are signs around town that read that way. Yeah, I guess that's the sign I was Mm -hmm. reading. So what do you have on for this month? Um, a lot of the same, and I think we've covered everything else. Have we? Yeah. Okay. Um, Good. Vegetation rules. Yeah. I think that's it. Because a lot of them are the same. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I think the last thing we want, well, before we go to the last thing, Mm -hmm. anything else that you want to add from your side? Not that I think of. um, You know, I, I love the whole transparency, right? I think that all of our elected officials, um, school board, uh, city council, supervisors, everyone I think is making a push to become more transparent. Just, 
you know, I, I don't keep track of when school board meetings are. Um, and again, I only remember city council meetings because they're on my calendar, <laughs> so, yeah. um, so that I show up. Um, but, you know, I, I just encourage everybody, you know, to watch Facebook, check out um, the, the city's website because there is a lot of good information um, on the website. Yeah. Um, and the calendar is right there on the first it front is. page, yeah. just the first page that you go to. You just have to scroll down mm -hmm. and see it. Yep. Yep. And, you know, the the people that keep our Facebook page updated, they do a really good job. I know Melanie's really integral yep. to that, so she does a phenomenal job. And um, she has a sense of humor. She does. She's been really <laughs> funny lately. I've appreciated it. Yeah. Right. I think everyone has. They're, we've been getting a lot of comments and likes. So yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. So we want to end with Rag Brides Coming to Town. Yes. July 26th. Yep. Um, we're a pass Kind of town. a lunch stop type yep. of deal, Kind right? of a lunch stop. Yep. So we're sorry. We're going to need volunteers. Yep. We all want you to come out and show them how wonderful Fairfield is. Mm -hmm. And um, we decided that it's fairfieldragbride.com, I believe. I think so. Where they can mm -hmm. go and can check it, it out yeah. and uh, volunteer and, you know, organizations, I'm sure. And, you know, everybody be preparing for, for uh, being a good host, host yeah. uh, mm -hmm. for lunch, maybe brunch. Yeah. Yeah, because some people get up really early and get yep. through there fast. So um, I know Mindy uh, at the chamber spent some time, yeah, I don't know if it was last weekend or the weekend before her and Terry Baker up with the whole rag by crew going through kind of Great. what the plans are. And I know they're well underway yep. of making plans. Yeah, so. there's several different committees. Mm -hmm. And I have to say they're coming in on Libertyville Road. They're going to be tired when they get here because yes. of the hills. This is hills. one of the hilliest rides, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they, that you know, like I say, we're that's about halfway. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to get them full of carbs and some good food so yep. they can finish their rides for that day. And we'll hope for good weather and uh, just a fun day. I'm sure we'll have music downtown. Yes. The whole downtown great. will be, you know, cordoned Shut off, yep. right? So um, expect that. And uh, for those who really, really hate it, don't plan on going anywhere <laughs> or, or go, go out of town. town. <laughs> but, you know, it's always fun. So yeah. we hope we have lots of volunteers. And like I said, go to the, go to the website and volunteer and uh, you'll be put to good use. Yes, so. absolutely. So thanks for joining us, yeah, Terry, today. Thanks for having me. And um, it's fun. And thanks to Verna for doing this. Yeah, we thanks, appreciate Verna. it. Yep. And uh, we'll see you next month. Sounds good.